You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Welcome to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I'm Tubes, and after my emergency loan deal last week, I've got a second appearance. Thank you, Gaffer. Mate, you was different class last week, and this is one of them situations, Tubes, when, you know, you're forced to play the youngster, <laughs> and you unearth a star, like Rashford at Man United. You just come in, seamless, you got all the odds right for Coral, which is, you know, they're happy with that. Yeah. You know, the, the, the synergy was good, you know, so you're in, and you're in on merit now, but you have to keep the enemy's complacency now, yeah. keep doing the job. So don't fall asleep at the wheel. Absolutely not. I yeah. thought, you know, I kept the ball well, you know, played the simple passes and let, you know, you and Tony Pulis, you know, do work the magic. So I'm pretty happy with my debut. TP was brilliant, wasn't he? He's so good. What He's so good, wasn't he? I absolutely love the story about the Rothmans book about with Harry Redknapp. You, you name a player and I'll tell you what team he plays for. It's just unbelievable. That's just so 1980s, wasn't it? it it's so good. Do you know what I mean? And uh, what I loved was the fact that you asked him about headbutting James Beattie and not me. I didn't want to do that because he's still scary, isn't he, TP? Absolutely. You wouldn't, you wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> and the word Herbert. Herbert, is, yeah. <laughs> bring bring back the word Herbert. What a word. What Listen, a word. when someone's a Herbert, they need to be told this new generation. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I think it's a brilliant exactly. word. Scruffy but, Herbert. Right, on to, the, on to right. today's show. We're going to talk uh, Champions League and who should be starting in goal at the Euros. Let's get our guest out, a keeper with the most Premier League appearances, second most clean sheet, FA Cup winner, it's David James. Jamo, how you doing? Hello, chaps, yeah. Um, Hello, Jamo. Was that, was that most Premier League appearances for a keeper? Most Premier yeah. League appearances for a keeper. Oh, yeah, get it that'll right. That'll we yeah. need to get our facts right. And second most clean sheet. Who's got the most clean sheets, Jamo? Oh, come on. Who come is it? on. That, that, mon it? that monster from the Czech Republic. Is it Big Petter, yeah? Yeah. Big Petter Czech. Yeah, but listen, that don't count, mate. He had four <laughs> or five of the world's greatest centre-halves playing in front of him throughout his career. So I, do you know what, Joe? I like that. I like that. If yeah. you say who's got the most clean sheets for someone who got relegated twice, then I, I fulfil that category. That's <laughs> not, not someone who's won everything. Exactly, mate. Listen, <laughs> we won't put, throw anyone under the brush, literally, but you you wasn't playing with John Terry and Cavalio for the most of your career, was you? So that is an unbelievable stat, JMO. Thank and you. it shows about your longevity, mate. How long did you play in a Premier League for? It must be 18, 20... 18 seasons. That's unbelievable. That's right. unbelievable. Just even for, like, you know, it's easier for a goalkeeper, but because you ain't got the... the, the <laughs> yeah. no, no, but like, you haven't got to run around, but just to have that kind of consistency to, to, for, you know what I mean? And I know you had a big injury, didn't you, in the middle of your career at West Ham? Yeah. Where you done your knee. So that's unbelievable, j -Mo. Thank you, yeah. Oh. And j -Mo, how's the painting going? You, you're banging into your painting now, aren't you? I, I've got loads of paintings lying around me. Hmm. Mm. And also, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, the reason I'm mm is because, uh, yeah, 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 no, it's going well. I, I, I haven't said that. Did I paint? Hang on a minute. Oh, one minute. Here we go. Oh, brilliant. Here we go. Oh. It's a painting of you, Joe. Oh. Te technology, <laughs> technology. Right. So this was, this is my last one. I did the other day. It was just like a really stormy wow. day, but there was a. That's immense. I wish I could paint that. That looks look so good, doesn't it? Like, like imagine that. Well, it's I just, just... Uh, I think with with the thing about my painting is, and uh, just to go off on that subject, when lockdown kicked in, I started getting real into politics, American politics, because right. it was around the time of the election. Yeah. So I've done loads of uh, loads of painting related to. Uh, I'm not going to show them, but the uh, loads of painting related to politics. But like lately, because we're coming out of lockdown. Yeah, that painting sort of symbolised where we're at. You know, this big dark cloud, and there's a there's a rainbow, and yeah, it's been really enjoyable. I haven't done what I told you. I haven't, I haven't done you. No, no, no. Do you know what? I, I, I've got a painting of you, right, from the 2002 World Cup. I fell asleep on Robbie Fowler's shoulder right, yeah. on the coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so I fell asleep, and he took a picture, and he didn't tell me. And then uh, just give me this painting, and I found it in the loft because we we was getting things out. It's amazing. I should have brought it in. 
Right. I, yeah, I, I did loads. Do you know what? I, I actually did loads of, uh, of football stuff when I was playing. I remember 2002, I did a few. I mean, I, I found them because I've been on the process of moving and been going through these these art books. And then, yeah. oh, oh, there's Michael Owen sat there yeah. playing uh, Solitaire on a computer. <laughs> Mate, it's brilliant. Honestly, like it's. Talk to me about the talk to talk to me about this painting, Joe. Talk, you've got you've got no, to give us more more details about no, your so painting you've got. Long journeys in Japan, and I was sat next to Robbie on the coach, and I must have Jamo must have been in front of me, and he just had this habit. He'd like take a picture, and like, and then he'd, he'd think, oh, that's a good picture, and he'd go home, and I'd, you'd, you'd go back to the room and you'd paint it. Or I think this is a drawing. A drawing, this is a, yeah, 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 it's a drawing. drawing. It's amazing. it's amazing. I got it framed and everything. It was amazing because it's you know falling asleep on Robbie Fowler's shoulder. It's amazing. It's a, it's a great memory. Huh? It's a comfy. It was a comfy shoulder as well, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. A little bit Robbie, padded yeah. as well. Ro- Robbie, Robbie has got nice, comfortable shoulders. He's got really small ears, but comfortable shoulders. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> so the thing is, too, it's funny now that you mention it, Joe, because what I used to do when I was I started doing my drawing uh, back. At, I mean, I've been drawing all basically all my life, but the uh, when I was at Liverpool, so. It's a technology thing, I suppose. It's akin to Instagram in a way, without being funny. So guys would come around, friends would come around, and especially if they just had kids. And my thing was I'd get a Polaroid, take a photograph, draw the photograph, then give them both back to them. Because yeah. if I said to someone, you know, it. can I draw a picture of your kid? They'd give me the best photo. And I was like, yeah. well, why do I want to replicate the best photo? It doesn't make any sense. So I do the Polaroid. You'd get the kid pulling these funny faces, and then you yeah. just draw it, give it to them, and say, there you go. So like with Joe, it was just I wanted to do a drawing and that, I mean, I, I just haven't got the picture, but um, yeah, it's just, it's nice. And it's, and it's I, I, dare I say it's unique. It's just one of those it's things. It's definitely like, unique. Yeah. I love that. I think I, that's absolutely I'll find top it. draw. I'll find it and I'll bring it on the show next week. It's brilliant, nice. honestly. Unbelievable. Right. So what we normally do, we're going to change it up this week. Um because I'm, I'm the governor now, second show, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to switch up. Normally we go through your whole career, but like you said, you've played for years and years and years, so we'll be until next week talking about it. But after last night, um, two massive games in the Premier League, uh, in the Champions League, uh, Jude Bellingham and Phil Foden on absolute flames, which is great mm. for the Euros coming up. We're going to take it right back to 2004, the Euros, uh, the first big tournament for the golden generation. You two were there. How was it? Right, so that was been off. Oh, so for me, I don't know what JMO thinks. That's that is the most talented England squad I play. I, I didn't play a minute in Euro two thousand and four, and and the reason I say that is because he's playing Paul Scholes off the left, and I love Scholesy, and he retired after that. And there's no way I'd have played fifty six times for England if Scholesy didn't retire because he was a genius. But you had Frank, Stevie G, Bex, Mo was still still Mo, weren't he? Like this. Mm. He had his yard of pace, emergence of Wayne Rooney, John Terry, what Sol talent. Campbell, um, Ash. What do you think, Joe? I mean, yeah, I, 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 I find no? I find this conversation very interesting um, because it, it's been brought up a number of times, as you can imagine. Mm. You know, the golden generation. Mm. And I remember playing at the time, and no one was calling us the golden generation at the time. It was like in my career, it's almost like me being a Spice Boy. I was never a Spice Boy at the time. Yeah. I just got, you know, sort of in, brought into the into the fold later. And I, as I say, I, I knew we had a good squad. Yeah. Um, but I think, and um, possibly from from uh, being inside the football, the England bubble. Yeah. You, know, you always think you're going to win anyway. Yeah. You know, you go into the tournament. Well, how do you think you're going to? Well, yeah, a bit of luck. We're going to win it. So in yeah. a sense, we didn't value it as a golden squad, as opposed to just us being confident that we could do well. Um, but when you look at, back at it. Yeah, I mean, I, do you know what? I've been watching the telly in the morning, waking up, putting on Sky Sports. It's annoying. It's annoying because <laughs> half the time I'm letting goals in. Um, but the the other <laughs> the other the other end of it is the quality of these players. You talk about Mo; they're showing the Man United Liverpool games over over the uh, the years, and some of his finishes, Coley, he was just yeah. like, do you know, what? I knew he was good, but this is yeah. ridiculously good. Do you know what I mean? So being in that squad. Um, and I think the worst thing, and it, I, I don't know if you get this, Coley, I, uh, you, you go through your career, you've been doing the most random thing, like having a cup of coffee, and you'll be like, yeah, if I'd have dived left there and took yeah. that one over, <laughs> maybe we would have, uh, you know, we could have won it. Yeah. Not, not in a, like, a, oh, I'm going to go into depression or anything, but it's just like, 
just wonder what would happen if I'd have um, done that. You know, and that, I think... 100%. 2004 was the same. Yeah. But you mentioned Mo there, Michael Owen. Uh, what was it like in, like, training with those people? Like, were they just, like, we, like shooting practice? Like, zing, zing, Tubes, zing. Can I, can I just jump in there? Because I remember playing South Africa away. And I remember after training, I think J-Mo asked Scalzi to do some volleys. Would you do some volleys, like... And yeah. he just, kind like, and J Mo, it was like watching. You got this great goalkeeper against this probably the best striker of the ball I've ever seen, Paul Scholes, volleying it. I'm sitting there just like stretching, thinking, "Wow, like wow. he's hitting the top bins." J Mo's getting there. Some, do you, do you not remember this do, session? Do, you, you, do, right? Do you know? I, I remember the I vividly remember it. So Scholesy and Phil Neville are going to go off and do this practice. Yeah, I've just said to him, "Do you want a goalie?" Yeah, come over, Jamer. And the thing that got me, and I, when I do my coaching, when I'm with kids and uh, and sort of developing players, I talk about this as one of my anecdotes because Phil Neville, I don't know if you remember him, he was going down the left and he was doing a little shimmy, step over, drag back, and then the cross. Yeah. And then Scolzi, man. I, I, I don't know how many shots. Say we had 50, 30, 40 shots, whatever. I think the furthest he missed was a yard. Yeah, he was yes. ridiculous. But yeah. the, the point was that Phil was practicing what Phil would do in a game and Scolzi was practicing what he would do in a game. And I was just, I, I don't know, I was just fodder at the end of the day. But it was so good to be involved with it because when you see him scoring the goals on the telly, you know, in the Premier League or yeah. Freeman, whatever, and you go, wow, wow, it's amazing. We say, actually, no, this guy practices. Yeah. So in th realistically, every goal that Scolzi scored in a match, he'd probably done 101 times in practice. What's what's the saying, J-Mo? Um, what... I'll this up, but I'll give it a right uh, practice go. Practice makes permanent. No, no there's oh. a better one. What's done in the what what shows in the light is practice in the darkness or something like that. Someone oh. can write in. I've never heard it, but it sounds well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm well, listen, I'm, I'm adding philos now. philosophizer <laughs> to my, my a philosophizer. <laughs> a philosophizer. Uh, is that yeah. an app? Well, well maybe now, <laughs> the mate. Philosophizer <laughs> app. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Whatever's Jeez. done in the darkness <laughs> shines in the light. Yes. <laughs> Lyrics. Oh, that's unbelievable. A Picticus. I don't even think that's his name either. A Picticus. Anyway. Moving swiftly on. It's moving swiftly on. Owen Hargreaves oh. said that in that training camp, in that Euros, is the best football he's ever played. Like, what was it like to be in training sessions like at Euro 2004? Like I said, 2004, 2006 was the most talented England squad I've I'd seen in training and uh, just, yeah. But again, you're in a bubble. You don't like Jamo says, you don't realize how good you are. And I've, I've, I think we've, we've talked about Sven before. And I said, we was a little bit one dimensional for me in the, in the tactical, you know, Sven was a great man manager in the, he kept a nice calm bubble when he, you know, he was unwavering, which was good at the time because England managers were, you know, since him have sort of, got flustered, like even Capello and Steve, I felt like they maybe got a little bit flustered. Sven, you wouldn't want to play poker with Sven. You don't know, do you know what I mean? He's just <laughs> yeah. so, he'd be a shark. But um, tactically, we were just a little bit, like for instance, in that Portugal game, I don't know if you remember, uh, Jay, we, we brought on, we, we was sort of starting to command the game a little bit and they were pushing and pushing and ended up playing Deco at right back. And then, and then I thought to myself, well, that's just, I'm going to come on here and left midfield. I can get at Deco. He's not a right back. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then he put Phil Neville on left midfield. And I thought to myself, Poor. no, like, no, like a brave manager would have got that. And this is without any like, changes of systems, like, you know, trying to free up Stevie and Frank by playing a holding midfielder. This is just, all right, I've seen them put an attacking midfielder at right back. I've got a young left midfielder here. Oh, I would, at the very least, I'd have tested him going the other way. But he put Phil one and in the pattern of the game, they just kept dominating. The, and then they went and won on penalties. But I just thought it was a little bit, Sven, a little bit one-dimensional and tactically. I think the players we've got, we could have done so much more looking back. But we hold our hands up. I don't want to... We was, wasn't good enough. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Jamie? I mean, yeah, I think you're in the... the the difficulty with football, Coley, and you know this, is that it doesn't matter how good your squad is, doesn't matter how good a team is, there's always going to be a moment where you don't win a game. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the champions of the uh, of tournaments generally don't lose, but 
England were never the best team in Europe at that time. They weren't the best team in the world in the World Cup. But we were a very good side. And ultimately, something is going to give, and that means you're going to get knocked out. And I think in that Portugal game, you know, I, I remember the I don't remember much of the game um, right. other than the, the equaliser where the cross came in. That still haunts me because it was late in the, the first equaliser. Uh, the head has come in, and it's kind of like, I was so close to it, but not close enough, obviously, yeah. to make the save. Yeah. And you're sort of thinking, that's one of those moments where it's like, why didn't I just do this? Yeah. Um, and then the second equaliser where it's just thumped. And I, I, didn't, I, I can't remember seeing the shot. All I know is the ball went past me and it was in. Um, yeah. And then we got the penalties. And <laughs> Oh, mate. I, I, I always fancy myself a penalty shootout. Always yeah. did. Always did. And... Uh, but it, there was this process, and you talk about tactics in the game, and you know we sort of got past that stage as tool. And this process I had was always like whistle goes, all right, right lads, get it, and then I just walk off, maybe lie on the floor, just do my own thing for a few minutes, just compose myself, and then go into the the shootout. And Gary Neville is following me round, and I'm walking, and I'm, I'm thinking, and I, I was really composed because I yeah. really what I should have told him to do is f off. Yeah, but I was just walking around, and he's following me. He's going, "You can do it!" And I think, and I looked at the rice for sale, and I've gone, <laughs> "He's doing my <laughs> head in." <laughs> and then carried on, and then obviously the penalty shootout goes on. The rice misses. I'm thinking, "Shit, did I put the rice off?" Yeah, um, but it was just one of these things, and I, and I still think about it now, and I think, why wasn't I better in the penalty shootout? Well, I know for one, mm. I'm not blaming Gary Neville, even though it was his fault. Um, the, well, wasn't I better in, in that moment? And yeah. they missed their first penalty. You know, I put him off. Um, and then we missed ours. And it was kind of like we, we could have won the penalties. I know, I know. But Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. their, and, their, and their keeper scored the winning goal. Does that uh, make yeah, sense? Yeah, thanks for that, I've already <laughs> no, no, <laughs> enough memories. I didn't need you to dig a hole This for. is like a therapy <laughs> session for us footballers where you do this. No, but go, but so, so, so going back, right? So... You took, I'm with I'm with you. I think of chances I missed in a f- Champions League final or a you know a big game I missed off. You've done hundred percent. I think that's the curse of being a footballer. I think you take the responsibility on, and when it don't go wrong, you don't just forget about it. it you're having your cornflakes one morning and it just pops up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You, <laughs> it just does. But no. going like going back to that organisation, which is why uh, with the penalty shootouts. Do you think then because you've managed in, in India, Jamie? You know you 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 study football, would you with a team go, right, okay, if it goes to penalty, it's all right, I'll manage, I'll go up to you, you're my goal, I'll go, Jamie, how do you want to play it? What do you want to do? Let's have a discussion. And then, right, okay, so Jamo wants to, so I would like to think, I would let my team know, right, Jamo, we're going to penalties, leave him alone. He's got his process, mm. right? You know, so we know that, that. And then, and then I'd have like, we did something at Chelsea, one of the, uh, Joe Edwards, the coach, who's, he, he did this brilliant thing where he they studied, studied penalty shootouts and they had all these little tricks. I'm not going to reveal the tricks of the trade, little psychological tip, tricks. You know, goal, I was with one of them, right? The goalkeeper had a little thing on his water bottle. Do you know what I mean? Where he, wow. he, he'd studied the what penalties, but he'd got in the, the player's head. So you're walking up with a ball, penalty, and he's like reading it, like as if to say, oh, okay, so I know where you go. So the, And then he's... All these, all these little, and he, he added them all up. And I thought, preparation. Do you mm. know what I mean? I thought, it's just logical. Yeah, 2004 was slightly different. I mean, it, it, interestingly, I went to um, contact one of my mates, at, I think it was at Sky at the time, mm. before the tournament. And I said to him, there was two values to this. I said to him, can you get me loads of footage of penalties? Right. Thinking that he would say, thinking that he would send me like 150 Premier League or international penalties, you know, ideally I'd have had every pot- potential penalty taker in the finals. I asked for these videos, I didn't get them. Then the first game we played France, who, who rocks up for the penalty in the last minute? Zidane. Zidane he scores. Yeah. And then I said something in the media after. I said, you know, um, I, I did ask the FA for, for any penalty information on, and they didn't have any on Zidane. And the headline was, FA fail. <laughs> Turns out Zidane hadn't taken a penalty for two years. So there wouldn't have been anything anyway. But it's kind of, it's one of these things. I mean, the, the ideas or the want was there originally for the preparation. But I think mm. where it is now, you know, oh, I, 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 even when I finished it. playing in Bournemouth, before the game, <clears> right, 
they've got three penalty takers. He usually goes here, he usually goes there. You know, sure enough, penalties pop up and uh, I save the occasional one. But yeah, it's uh, it's a. <laughs> I was talking to Pepe Reina yesterday about penalties because you you were you were with Pepe. Yeah, he was yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, you know, in the old days it was reading body language. He says now it's very very different, and uh, even for the for the player, they will study the goalie. The goalie normally yeah. goes left, normally goes. So it's a, you know the, the, the sort yeah. of fox and yeah. fox and chicken, chicken and fox. Whatever you want, yeah. mate. We do whatever. Philosophy <laughs> is not our strong point. No, also play for. Was it philosophical? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just want to sit here and listen to you two, but we've got to talk. So the goal, we're talking about the golden generation, but the, the current generation, uh, it's impressive, isn't it, what we've got in this country at the moment? I, I, I don't know what you had, how Joe looks here. I mean, I, I listen to Joe when I watch him on telly and obviously when we, we meet up and you're already, already excited about football, which is yeah. fantastic. I look at Phil Foden, and you, uh, you mentioned um, Bellingham, and I, I get excited yeah. because mm. you're looking at these lads and it's like, where can they go? I, I suppose, in a, again, Joe, bringing you back into it, it's like football fans watching you play when you were starting your career. It's just like, what is that guy doing and how does he do it so well? Well, you've got Bellingham, and last night's performance was an example of that. You've got Foden, who's been doing it all season. You've got the likes of Mason Mount doing it. And it just, and it, I mean, I'm just talking about the, the English players here, but when you look at um, football in general, I mean, the, the levels are, have you seen on uh, social media, Bellingham's nutmeg, backheel nutmeg? No. I've not seen oh, that. I, I think it's uh, Eric Dyer's walking on the pitch and he, he flicks, flicks it out with one foot and backheels it in, in super slow-mo and he nutmegs uh, Dyer. And it's I've not seen it. I love it already. Yeah, I, I love it. Coley, I was going to say, Coley, Coley would love it. You look on, you look on England's uh, Instagram and they show it on there. And it's just one of these things. It's kind of like we, we, we might have done something similar back in the day. Yeah. But he, oh. so, but there's, and, there's you know, massive the, comparisons, the, isn't there, with this squad? So the squad that you were in in 2004, you know, and onwards. Yeah, well, I, I think the difference logically is if you look at the 2004, we had a Man United contingent, which mm. were the best players in Europe. Yeah. Um, this England contingent doesn't contain the best players in Europe at the moment, depending on whether Man City yeah. win the, uh, the Champions League, you would argue. But this was a Man United side that were dominant for years and years and years. And, and most of that was a result of what was playing in that England squad. So, um, but I look at, as I say, Mason Mount, I look at uh, Bellingham, uh, Foden, I mean, Foden, Coley, oh, Kez. Yeah. You remember Kez? Yeah. You remember the movie Kez? Yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of Kez. I know he, Kez wasn't a particularly good footballer, but he just looks like Kez. And even after the interviews, he, he just look at him, he's like, yeah, he's really good. And I was just thinking, you're Kez, mate. You're, Kez, you're, you're, you're like Kez, Kez too. That's with the, um, the pigeon on the top of the uh, goal, wasn't it? Kez, is that right? When the well, it was a falcon, but yeah, you, <laughs> falcon. Pigeon, you, yeah. you this, obviously don't get you don't, this you don't get out of the city much, do you? Yeah, the falcon on top get of the, in the countryside. <laughs> but you t- you mentioned there, you said the Man United. You said there's like uh, there was a big bulk of Man United. A lot of talk about the divide in the England camps back in the day. Was there a divide? Which day? Would would, would a Ma- would a Man United player start together, right? Um, and that, I think, down to the brilliance of Alex Ferguson, who indoctrinated all of his Man United players into Man United first, Man United together. Like, they, they, they had the siege mentality, and they took that into England. I don't even think they realised they did it, you know, because you gravitate to your friends, but they were very insular and very together. And that was the, their genius as a team and as a club. And I, I, what... I, I would say about Alex Ferguson, listen, even players that didn't make it at Man United, who I've come across, they had that Man United swagger about them that come through the system and that sort of horribleness that they needed to be that team that they was. And then coming to England, I thought the lads found it hard to, to mix. I don't blame them. I don't think they realised it wasn't that it was, you know, they just do what they did. They won trophies. They were great players. But I think a lot of it was they were so tight together as a unit. You know what I mean? I think they would all, if they had their time, maybe open up a little bit. We'd all do things different. I'm sure we would have done. Interesting you say that, Coley, because I know we haven't had the conversation. Your observation would be 
um, pretty much what I saw. I, having said that, I mean, there were the odd one. Nicky Butt was yeah. Man United with a bit of someone else in him because he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. had good friends in uh, in other clubs. But yeah. the, there was, anecdotally, <sighs> so remember Toro or Pig in the Middle, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He's probably yeah. got a new name now. Yeah. So this was, Tubes, this is a religious thing in, in football that before training sessions, everyone had like, a game of Pig in the Middle, a game of Toro. And on the England camp, and I was laughing to myself because <laughs> the the basis of Toro, the fundamentals of Toro is keep the ball away from the guys in the middle for as long as you can. Yeah. yeah. It's not a difficult game. There's no, you know, I mean, there's no real rules to it other than if they touch it. The nutmeg is, the, I think, the only contentious rule, whether a clean nutmeg counts as staying for an extra yeah. go or, or whether a touch count. Anyway, England, tr- full train session, Toro. And you've got Gary Neville hitting it as hard as he can into Paul Scholes or into Phil Neville or into Bex. And if they miscontrolled it, they would laugh. So that meant that they went in the middle. Now you're thinking, no, you're supposed to keep the guy in the middle in the middle, not yeah. put the guy on the outside in the middle. So Man United are playing their own game of Toro, which was essentially stitch each other up. And everyone else is playing the normal game, which is keep the guys in the middle. Wow. And it was just, a, a, a for me, it basically solidified what Coley was saying, that they had their own unit. They had, and I used to joke about Phil and Neville, uh, Phil, Phil and Neville? Oh, yeah, Neville. Neville. <laughs> yeah. There was Neville Neville, Phil and Gary Neville. Yeah. Um, about them racing each other downstairs to breakfast and things like that because the two yeah. of them were so highly competitive, but Manchester United were highly competitive. Yeah. And you listen yeah. to Rio talking about, you know, <laughs> I think he said something once on the back of the bus about Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo thought he was big, you know, big spuds when he first came to the club and Ryan Giggs put him in his place. And it was kind of like, yeah, they police themselves. Alex Ferguson was yeah. a genius because, like you said, he created an environment, <clears throat> but he had an environment of players who could police their own changing room yeah. in a way through quality and respect. Mm. Um, and you saw that in that 2004, yeah. 2006 yeah. squad. It, yeah, it's important. It's not like, um, it's not me and JMO saying, oh, they, they didn't mix because they, they they were like, that was just how they were. Yeah. And we respect how good they were. And it's what won them trophies. And it just, in them little two weeks, 10 days you met with England, it was... They stuck together. I yeah, it was hard. It was hard to switch it to, like, oh, we've got this new team now. Yeah. It's not this Man United badge. This is England. It was hard for them to sort of Kelly, I think, I mean, decompress. You know, it, would be, it would be great to have a United player on here to get their point of view. And I don't, yeah. think, that, I don't think they would say the, uh, the, the truth, and I say that respectfully. Because the other thing that I noticed, and if you remember the beginning of each season, you know, you meet up for the first squad... And mm. we've just signed that player. Doesn't matter if he's good or bad. We signed yeah. that player. And the first thing I say, oh, what's he like? And go, oh, mate, he's unbelievable. Yeah, quality block. But yeah. there's always that other player. What about him? Mate, he's rubbish. Yeah. I yeah. can't believe how we signed him, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Man United players. And you know they have signed the lemon in football. Yeah. Somehow they've managed. Ferguson's got it wrong. Everyone knows this player's no good. What do you think of the lemon? Great lad. Yeah. Go on, no, no, seriously, mate, what's his yeah. left? No, great, great lad. And it's yeah. like, right, I'm not going to talk to you anymore because you're not giving me what I want. I want to know he's rubbish. You're not telling me. I'll go and ask, I'll go and ask one of the Tottenham players how bad their players are. <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> it was just, they would never give you anything yeah. to give them a dig out. And Phil Neville was the best. Every yeah. player was the best player ever, the greatest lad ever. And yeah, yeah. you could never get past that, that guard. Yeah. And again, it's, it's it's a testament to Alex Ferguson and that team, or the, those mm. teams, because they kept winning and winning and winning. When Fergie mm. left, all of a sudden you hear there's bad players at Man United. It's like, oh, what? wow, what's going on? But this current this current England squad looks like they're all like best mates all together. Yeah. The system's different now, Tubes. The, the, mm. the, 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 I, I'm with JMO in a sense. I think football's come on. You know what I mean? I think that the way that we play now is tactically streets ahead of what we was doing. The players are technically so gifted. I love mm. the way that we play. And I just think these lads have all come through this system, the FA put into, and the FA get a lot of stick, but they put this system in place where they've been, it's the, the Hubbards and Georges, they go in, they know how they play, they know what's expected, and they're just starting, to, now, now's the time. These boys have won trophies in the 17s, 20s, 18s, not the 21s yet, that's another story. But now, now's our time. And I, 
I'm not pragmatic about it. So I get excited. I'm like a fan. I love Foden. <laughs> I love Mount. I love Grealish. I, I, and I love all these great players. And I just think that it's all set up. We're actually, we are the bookies' favourites, I think. Yeah, five to one with Coral. See that nice way I've just relayed it into the odds? Oh, is that? So it was that that's, poetry that's emotion. Professional, poetry professional, emotion. Right? Beautiful, okay. beautiful. But yeah, I just I, I think it's our time. These next two tournaments. Not only do I think it's um I think it's inevitable over the next three tournaments we will win something. If we don't, it will be down to some kind of anomaly. Because I just think we're so strong in most departments. We'll, we'll get on to talk about the goalkeeper um, department next. But yeah, I just I could so talented player and so young mm. and so fearless. We, we, look at our record. There's a reason that we're we're we're, we're bookies' favourites is because we've not lost the game, tubes, in years. I know you know, but it, you say, oh, you know, who, who did um, North Macedonia win and turned North over Macedonia. Germany? You still have to win mm. games of football. You know, you, you, even if you're better than the opposition, and these boys have found a way to win at all times. So, I think, Colby, I've got to say, mm. I mean, it, it goes back to 2010. Um, and if you think about our qualification in 2010, we were one one defeat against Ukraine, uh, Rob Green getting sent off, which is another yeah. anecdote, which we're not going to have time for me to go through. Um, we lose that game 1-0. <laughs> that was the only defeat. We won every other game. But when we go into the final, <laughs> we essentially were a different team because the yeah. preparation was different. Uh, yeah. And... <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> Who's, here's the anomaly, right? But I'm afraid <laughs> you lose you lose Rio in a in a silly you lose Rio, right? Okay, so you lost your centre half. Um, then you got Ledley King, right? Now who manages unbelievable, was in the squad. unbelievable, unbelievable player, player right? Oh my. But when he plays at that time in his career, he trained once a week and played for Spurs, right? So at the World Cup, he's not first choice, but he's third choice. Yeah, so. We have, they then decide to train him like he can train every week. So then Ledley breaks down. Do you know what I mean? We talk about preparation. So Rio's broken. You can't do nothing about that. But you've got Ledley King. Now he's broken down. Do you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden you've got, you've got um, Cara, who was probably at that time not at his peak of his powers. Fantastic player in his own right coming in. So he's your fourth choice. First game, he, he, he's, he's Kara's a player that needs to play every week. You know, he's not a, a so he, he, and he comes up. and then Matty Upson, very good player, but he's stepping into a level where he's he's never been. Do you know what I mean? Like he's yeah, never yeah. played Champions League football to his level. And as much as Matty was a good player, it was a big ask for him to to do that. So then all of a sudden, and then you have got a manager then who's, who, who who I thought he just sort of he chopped and changed it. Like we we didn't know what we was. Like he said all oh, that. That qualifying campaign was solid. Mm. And then it was, who was, who was the mid, I didn't know who played in midfield. It was like, Stevie, Gareth Barry was injured. Like it was, it, it, was, it, 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 sounds, like, it like, sounds like a bit of a mess. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, 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 having managed, I know that what the players see isn't necessarily what is going on, if that makes sense. Fair the, point. The, fair yeah. Fair. yeah. However, the, and what you mentioned there about Lidley was, was uh, I've got, I can empathise with him because, I'd had that uh, uh, reoccurrence. I'd had an operation in the summer of 2009, yeah. I think it was, and loads of complications with it. So I ended up going in the World Cup not 100% fit. We had to train 100% full-on hard work every single day with a goalkeeping coach. Now, yeah. a fully fit player would find it an effort. Their yeah. argument was if you can't train hard, you can't play hard. But the goalkeeping position isn't one that's demanding physically. No. no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. But the training no. session was a physically demanding session. But it told you, I, that World Cup ruined me. Physically yeah. I, ruined me. I remember now. No, no, another thing, I'll just going back to that World Cup, because um, we're talking about the goalkeeper situation, but it was you, Rob, and Joe Hart. Joe Hart mm. being the youngster in the squad. So you as a senior goalkeeper. Rob was, I would say, second choice at going into the tournament. You played the... Did you play the, the? You played all the qualifiers, yeah? Am I right in saying? I played half the qualifiers, stopped from the operation, and Green took over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he got sent so. Off. And at one point, I felt there was a session. I don't know if you remember this. I think he was considering Joe Hart. Mm -hmm. You know, complete anomaly, young goalie, went on to have a great career, talented. And I felt it. It, it was a playing out from the back 
um, session on we're doing, and he just Capello seemed to just be zoning in on Joe Hart and hammering him and hammering him. And I thought, looking back on it now, he was testing his mentality, you know, for going into a World Cup. I I, I don't know if you whether they, you think so, but and Joe sort of, I felt he sort of he reacted a little bit and got a bit agitated and. His, his technique went a bit off, and I think that's when he, that's when he, when he decided to go with with Rob. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But then you, and I remember, I don't know, you had a session, right? Again, I've been mad. I remember things. It was like, and it was the best I've ever seen you. And you, you, it was a shooting session. Yeah, in Switzerland. And you was unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I, I remember the session. I think it was in Switzerland. We went to it was Switzerland, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and. <laughs> So, uh, Chum, just so to give you uh, give you a bit of um, a, 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 a vision of what it was like. Yep. So this shooting session essentially was everyone lined up around the edge of the, the D, and the first guy hits a shot. You try and make the save, and literally as soon as you're on your feet, the next shot comes in, and it's every player in the squad basically just shooting at you. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing was, I, I Joe, I'm glad I, glad you enjoyed it, Joe, because I felt I was like Superman. Yeah. Because even I remember Waz it in a shot and he was like, I'm not getting this shit, I've got a touch on it and I've saved it. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um I don't want to say his name. There was a player <laughs> <laughs> who hit a shot last. It was literally the last shot. And it he had the wobble on it. And so yeah. as I've gone to save it, it's gone underneath my leg. And yeah. Capello was like, oh, um, and it was one of those things. It was like, it was like. What was it? What was he like? He was like, hmm. You know, I'm, I'm doing a Superman save, and all of, all of a sudden, he just had twenty-two I, balls peppered at him. Yeah, and then the twenty-third one, I was lowest lane. It was yeah. just gone underneath, and it, it, it was just like this side. And I, I knew from the side, it was like, I've let him down. Capello was an amazing. It, he was like the the. the he, he's a genius, and a lot yeah. of people don't like him uh, when it comes to tactical stuff. I mean, there's stuff that Capello did as a as a manager, as a coach, which, yeah, of course you're going to question him because ultimately, at national level, we didn't win it. Um, but he would come up to the goalkeepers, Coley, he'd go, "Why, why, why, uh, why you English keepers? Why you do this?" And you, you're thinking, All right, hang on, is this the uh, is this the teacher? waiting to trick me but he was just yeah. inquisitive and yeah. I would say I, we, we, I remember once there was things Greeny me and uh, Robbo it might have been and it was about uh, English goalkeepers positioning on free kicks and I was like as in, as, as in, as in what? right so you line a wall up yeah four man wall free kicks coming from there Cole saying the free kick yeah and yeah. traditionally you put the, the the charger just here on the right hand side you stand there yeah yeah, yeah. And he said, why don't you put the charger on the end or five on the in the wall and this guy just step out so you can see the ball because the goalie kept jumping behind yeah. the wall. Yeah. Right. And he, he's brought this thing up and I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. Okay, can we do it? And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, wow, hang on a minute, this works. <laughs> this yeah. actually works. So yeah. from that moment, I set my walls up with an extra man who just, timing, just stepped out just before the kick. When it was done properly, never conceded a free kick. Really? Funnily enough, there were two free kicks in 2009-10 season which didn't work properly. One against Ronaldinho. Yeah. When Crouchy ended up at Portsmouth, he ended up in the wall. I'm screaming at Crouchy and he was in the wrong position. And then Ronaldinho started, then all of a sudden I jumped behind the wall and Ronaldinho decided that it was a good thing to bend it in the top left-hand corner. Um, Bastard. <laughs> yeah. Wanker. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the second one was uh, this guy, I don't know if you remember him, uh, Drug, 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 Final, 2010. Same thing, line the wall up. Jamie O'Hara is supposed to be on the end, stepping out. Jamie O'Hara is in his own world. And Drug, uh, so uh, there's a gap. I step behind the wall, Drogba decides to bend it in the bottom left-hand corner. I don't know what about left-hand side. Maybe that was my yeah, weak yeah, side. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But the, getting back to the point about Capello, this was the, the that mad genius bit. Yeah. He identified there was a problem. He identified a solution. And, you know, if there was one complaint about Capello, it was he wasn't the most warmest character. <laughs> I'm going off on one here, Coley. Nah, that's what we love on here. We're, yeah, we're that's what the, we do. That's yeah. what we do. We're in base camp. 
And I don't know how many times you walk past Capello in, the, in a corridor. And he yeah. just literally walked past you like you were a tourist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I and thought it, that was just me. Oh, Coley, one time he looked at me. And I, I remember going down for, uh, for food. Next time I said, guys, Capello looked at me in the corridor. I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. what it means. <laughs> but what's the, what, what, what is the point Sorry. of that, though? What is no, the point no, of choose, blanking choose. your team? I don't choose. get it. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go on, I've got yeah, a yeah. tangent. Sorry, mate. I've got yeah. a tangent. Right. That's South Africa. You just reminded me. Think of memories back now, right? South Africa. Am I right? Did I remember this right? Because where our base camp was like, it was like, don't leave your doors open because monkeys sometimes come in your bedroom and, and they've been known. Yes, to- <laughs> yes I'm right, ain't I? I'm you know, right. The, the veranda door. The veranda was, door. Yeah, don't yeah. leave them open because monkeys will come in and eat your food, right? So I've got a thing like where I'm a little bit scared of monkeys, right? So of course, I mean, time... it's, a, it's an everyday problem where you live. Yeah. <laughs> so every time... Monkeys patrolling every, every time I go, every time I go down in a, I think it. Oh shit! Did I leave my veranda? I, I, if there's a monkey in my room, I'm gonna be <laughs> you shitting myself. What's that got to do with Capello blanking you though? Oh yeah. Oh, I, yeah I, I, remember, I just remember. Do you remember me about the monkeys thinking? I've been annoyed. Why are they putting us in a f***ing hotel? When it, f***ing, it was riddled with monkeys everywhere. Like I wanted did, to be on the top floor. Did you actually safe. see? Did you see a monkey? I never saw a monkey. No, not no. saw one. But it was. They put it on the pillow every day, like as a reminder. So I thought this must be on. Like, don't leave your veranda doors open. <laughs> I just love the thought of you walking in your room. There's a monkey sat by your mini bar. <laughs> She's there with her Jack Daniels. Or <laughs> Hello, Joe. Yeah. Good session a day. Yeah. <laughs> there was game of FIFA. Cape- game of FIFA. There was another one with Capello, which. Uh... So you, re- you remember the um, the, the wellness and fitness suite where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the shoes where the hotel was across the car park was the the sort of fitness center. And I remember walking in there one day, and Capello's walking out. So I've gone uh, hola, come or something like that. Which in which I thought was saying uh, hello, how are you in Spanish? Yeah, and he corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> Not even like hi, yeah. He just said no, it should be this, and I was like, oh, oh, well, cheers, so I will never do that again. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love Capello stories. I've got, I, I, I got to say something else though. I've got to say <laughs> yeah, something go else. On, crack on. So I uh, I was invited to play in Samueletto's. 10th anniversary for his charity. Uh, I'm going right. back three or four years ago. Uh, I was in Turkey. It was literally the same time they had the coup. And right. um, <laughs> Capello was the manager. So we've gone to flew Sardinia to pick Capello up and, on his private jet to take us to Turkey. And I was sat there and I was thinking, right, there's four seats. There's one of your teammates, Essium, was on there. Yeah. Um, myself, uh, I think it was JJ Okocha was on there with his, with his lad. There's, there's six seats, whatever. I'm thinking... Yeah. Who's going to sit next to Fabio? Oh, God. <laughs> this is going to be an awkward few hours, simply because every every uh, interaction with him as a player wasn't like the most warming. Yeah. Matt Coley came on the on the plane. It was like it was his stag do or something. He was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, he was amazing. Yeah. Um, fellow stag do. Just <laughs> he, was, he was so good. So good. And I was, I was like, yeah. why weren't you like this as a manager? If you'd been like this as a manager, we'd, yeah. have, won, we'd have won the World Cup. Do you know what? I remember, I remember his first um, game. Uh, one of the only conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the only times I had a good conversation with him and uh, he was um, talking, he said, and, and I don't know how it went, but he alluded to the, he, he was surprised how professional and how good technically English players were. So I'm thinking, does, has he just watched Mike Bassett before he took the job? <laughs> like, I'm like, you're all talking, like, it's like league winners, Champions League winners. And he's like, Yes, he's very professional. Like, he's expecting us all to just be turning up, like, boozed up or something. I don't know. And oh, then that's... I think he just, he misjudged, I think, the the English mentality. It, like, probably what we're perceived of from the 80s and 90s mm. in Italy. Do you know what I mean? He's like, and he couldn't believe how hard the lads trained. And he did, do you know what I mean? And he just, he's just, he's just too late. He just, before he started to turn. And I think he just, yeah, he just sort of, had enough of it by then. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. 
I've been with my wife now 45 years. We're, we're childhood sweethearts. We've been together since we're 16 and 15. Oh, come on, Joe. You're starting to make me cry now. What's up yeah. with you? Jeez, well, that's, what, that's the intention, Alan, to make you all cry. <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Joe is Alan's next winner. As I say, you look at that qualification, and the, it was one of these things, Tube. So, again, so you've got to sort of put yourself in a footballer's mind for a minute. You go away for England, it should be like the the, the highlight of the season representing the country, mm -hmm. irrespective of how well you are in a, a domestic team. But, you know, you go into represent your country. Absolutely. And traditionally, you go away, you play your games, and it was a good atmosphere. We talk about the Man United lot and that, whatever. It was mm. still a really good atmosphere. And yeah. the, the coaches generally even spend, everything was kind of warm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you go away with Fabio and his team, and it was like a boot camp. Yeah. And you'd have 10 days away, and if you, if you took the games out, this is the irony of it, you took the games out and say, why would I be doing that as a professional footballer <laughs> for 10 days? It was hard, hard, hard. But mm. because of the what, sort, what sort of stuff? Just just training. Everything was hard. You know, no no catch-up, no drinks. I mean, you know, it was like, a, as I say, literally like a boot. Locked up for 10 days. Yeah. You know, it was, these, it was a hard sounds, It sounds shit. No, yeah, yeah, but choose it, 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 the, um, what's the word? The, the ends justify the means. So when you yeah. win two qualifying games, having worked so hard, you're like, I'll do that again for 10 days if we get six points. So yeah, it yeah. all made sense. The, the irony of this is when we had the friendlies, we were only there for three days, we didn't even know who we were playing against in, in the context of a training session. Yeah. You know, if, we, if we're playing Croatia and uh, uh, Belarus, whatever, from day one, it's like playing Croatia, video, 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 blah, 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 blah. And this is what Croatia do. You knew everything. You knew every player by his middle name. Um, yeah. And then you go and beat Croatia. When we played a friendly against Spain, it was almost like, all right, where are we? We were in Spain and we got a game. Before you know it, you're home and you've lost. And you think, we didn't do any preparation for that. And then mm. when we got to the World Cup, and this was the thing, the World Cup, I, I, I remember turning around to Wazza and going, this is going to be a tough pre-tournament camp. I'd, I'd imagine we were going to be running and doing all sorts of nonsense physically. I'd imagine we were going to get drilled about the first game against USA, and it never happened. And then we leave Switzerland, ah. and it was like, mm. I know it's going to be tough that first week in South Africa. Then we get there, and it never happened. And we get end up. I think we might have talked about USA in the in the uh, team meeting before the game. Mm. Yeah. It, it just seemed like a completely different environment. And mm. I think from from a player's perspective, Joe, and you know this as uh, as well as anyone. When you're used to your manager acting in a certain way and you get results, then you expect him to continue acting that way. If he's good, bad, yeah. indifferent, as long as there's yeah. some consistency, you go, okay, everything's normal. I'm going to crack on. As soon yeah. as things start changing, it's like, hang on, what's going on here? And then yeah. your, your, I think your performances and England performances in that World <clears> Cup, <throat> none of them were good. No, I agree. I just think, I think as well, if you, there's a balance to be had at international football, like, and I, I'm a, Great believer. I played for England right the way through the age groups. You can prepare diligently and well, but also make it an enjoyable, fun time and mm. trust the players to do the right things in their spare time. You could do both. There's no need for it to be one way or the other. And we were so swinging from one way to the other, you never knew, we never knew where we were. Capello had this thing. I used to call it, I refer to it as uh, deal or no deal. So... <laughs> It doesn't matter how much training you do, and, and even to the point, it doesn't matter what team you're in at the end of the last training session, you still didn't know if you're guaranteed to start. So you, yeah. <laughs> you're going to team meeting, and you're, out, you know, you're literally 10 minutes away from getting on the bus to go to the match, and you've got the flip chart with nothing on yeah. it, and you're just waiting for him to turn the flip chart. And it was like deal or no deal. You want to yeah. know if he's no, 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 100%. <laughs> I thought I was starting. I thought oh I was starting the God. first game, nailed on. I thought... Played against Japan. I, I made two goals. We won 2-1. I thought, well, wow, Defo starting here. You, you know, you know, it's a play thing. I, I played myself in, like, yeah, playing yeah. off that, off the left. Didn't even get a minute. Turned up. <laughs> boom. I was like, what's going on here? And then he was sending people to warm up. I'm like, what have I done? And they had no idea what the team was. No all. deal. No deal. No deal. Yeah. No, no deal. deal. <laughs> no, no deal. deal. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. Yeah. I mean, that first game against USA, we we were having a discussion on the bus. I think it was the last <laughs> training session. The lads were like, you, you know, and again, I, I think this is one of the things that Capello had never had to deal with before. You know, he's highly successful as a, a club manager, one major 
trophies as a club manager, but never been in that um, tournament experience yeah. where yeah. You, you, you got, as, as Joe said, having to keep people right, whether they're happy or not is, is subjective, yeah. but you have to keep people right for the performance. And I don't think he knew how to manage that side of it because no. we're having a, a discussion with, our, you know, Rio and that's, who, who do you think is going to start in goal with? This is the last exactly. training session. I, I'm like, Nuts. I'm sat there, I'm thinking, well, I've got the number one jersey. Maybe it's me. And then the lads are going, no, Rob Green thinks he's going to be number one. He's told his mates. And I'm sort of thinking, well, how does Rob know if I don't know? Because surely yeah. I should know that I'm not playing rather than I am playing, whatever. So I'm sat in the room with you, Joe. I left my gloves outside the uh, outside the room. And I'm sat there and I'm looking at that flip chart and I'm going, I don't know, is that, is that James? or Yeah, I can't. Flips over, it's like, okay, it's Greeny. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought, yeah, but I, I, I actually thought that if it wasn't me, it was going to be Joe Hart. Yeah, because Joe uh-huh. played really well against Japan, and he trained really well, and all these things. You just thought if it's not going to be me, it's going to be Joe. But he, he picked Rob, which which was fine. And I walk, I walk out of the room. <laughs> I walk out of the room, and Franco gives me my gloves. He goes, here you go, Jamo. I said, yeah, a lot of good day off for me, aren't they? And I, I, w- <laughs> I walked off. That wasn't a good idea. Yeah, no. I know. That leads us on to, to now and the goalkeepers. So very similar. We don't know who we're going to have, who Gareth's going to go for, but I think we'll be a little bit more prepared rather than waiting for that flip chart to happen in <laughs> like 2010. Deal or no but, deal. Deal or no deal. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously you've got Pickford. And I, like, and I like Pickford. He's not let England down. You know, although he's made, I think he's been a bit erratic of late for Everton. I like Pope. I think Pope's, now you I might, I think Pope seems the most assured in the, in coming for crosses, in, in, in shot stopping. I think he seems the most assured. And I think Henderson's the anomaly. I think Henderson could be the best out of three. Yeah. But similar to how Joe Part was in 2010. I think the big yeah, problem cheers, for. Thanks. <laughs> No, no, no. Joe Hart is the youngster. Well, Sorry. He, he could be the best out of the three. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Joe what Hart. Say, Joe? Come on. No, no, no. Joe Hart is the youngster. Oh, that's you, No, sorry. Okay. Henderson's the youngster, like Joe Hart was in 2010, where Capello's probably thinking, is he ready? He was three years later down the line. Probably in 2010, he wasn't. So, but with Pope, I think England have worked so hard on a goalkeeper being able to play from the back. And I think when he played against Croatia... Not who did we play recently? My mind's gone. Poland. Um, Poland. Yeah, so, yeah, Poland. I said, every time the ball went back to him, it, it worried me. And I think so much of what we do well with Pickford is playing through the back. So I'm going to, I'm talking rubbish about drivel about goalkeepers as usual. But if you're going to ask for me to pick my number one now, I will take a big gamble and go with a youngster. Dean Anderson. What do you think, Jamo? Yeah. Well, Let's let's try and Put break me this right, one down. Please. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, the uh, I agree with you. You know, uh, Jordan hasn't let England down, nor has Nick Pope, um, mm-hmm. and nor has Henderson. I mean, not. I, I think Henderson's probably made one save. Um, it, but it goes back to the point I was making earlier. The, the problem with England and winning tournaments, as as with every team, is you only need one incident to knock you out of the tournament. So. Um, you know, do you wait for that one mistake? And I suppose like an Indian rain dance, you know, if you're always going to say they're going to do it at some point, eventually they will. Do. I think with Jordan, yeah, he, he's got some great feet on. He's, uh, he's confident, sometimes overconfident, which isn't a bad thing. You'd rather have it that way than have it less confident. I think with Nick, what really frustrates me about looking at goalkeepers and people saying that he can't play, he can play with his feet. I'm sure if you saw Nick Pope in a in a warm up or a knock around a game of Toro, not involved in Man United yeah. players, he would be very good. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere down the line, you need to translate that capability onto the field, and whether right. that's the confidence. And again, sports psychologists. If sports psychologists got involved and said to Nick, "Come on, let's work on you doing this in a game for England or even for Burnley to that matter," um, because even when you talk about Burnley's style of play, there are times in a game where you could do the bit that refers to goalkeepers out the back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, Sean Dyche is like, every time you get the ball, just boom it. There will be a time, back pass, whatever. Anyway, point being is, he can work on that and have the confidence or the competence to be able to make his that side of his performance better. So I think Nick Pope right. can, can tick that box. When it comes to Henderson, oh, 
I'm talking about young outfield players. This is a guy I buzz off. Right. Oh, wow. Buzz okay. off him. Good. I, I, there's little things in games. And um, I think Chelsea early on, was it this season or was it the end of last season? Uh, when they, I think it was in Sheffield United at the end of last season when uh, Frank got to a position where they were just winging these balls in. And I was looking at Hendo in goal, and he was like, hey, go on, just chuck it in the box. I'm coming for it. And when you see yeah. someone with that kind of aggression, confidence, or desire even, you're like, please don't stop. You're going to drop some. He, he dropped yeah. it. I mean, I said, Cold, he's not really annoyed me. Uh, cool. He played the game Man United on the weekend. And th- obviously the conversation was, Henderson's ahead of De Gea. Uh, you know, is this the end of De Gea? Uh, Henderson, yeah, until he makes a mistake, blah, blah, blah. And he, he comes across, he drops it, it gets cleared. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. And there's a big question mark over whether De Gea will play the next game because Hendo's dropped across. It's bollocks. Yeah. It? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, if he goes in the back of the net, you say, yeah. well, actually, that cost, that drop cross ended up in a goal. But you look at it and go, no, no, the guy came for the cross. Yeah, he didn't do it right. He didn't, didn't yeah. catch it. But he still came for it. I, whether he came for one after, I don't know if there was an opportunity. But I've seen him missing cross. Melier, sorry, I have to go on about Melier at Leeds. Exactly the same. The yeah. young goalkeeper who just goes, look, you want me to come for the crosses, I'll come for them. If I drop one, yeah. I'll still come for the next one because I, I won't drop that one. When I see Hendo, that's what I see. When, yeah. you, when you talk about playing out the back, I think Hendo is another capable goalkeeper who needs the confidence to actually express that capability. And yeah. in answer to the question, who would I put in there? Well, I would put, at their best, I'd put Hendo ahead of both those other goalkeepers. Oh, wow. And, and would you put Hendo as the first-choice keeper at May United now? Do you think he's better than De Gea? It's a, it's a diff, yeah, it's a slightly different conversation on the basis that England are going into a tournament. They're going to play, what, five, six games? Hopefully. Six games to win yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. hopefully six. Well, you, you only need to be right for six games. Man United want to win the league. Uh, obviously not this season, but next season, Man United want to win the league. That's 38 games. And you're going to say, can you do it over 38 games? Um, but a short answer, yes. I think because at his age, with his potential, with his already what he's got capability, I think he can do just about everything that David De Gea does and more. Yeah, um, yeah. David De Gea has been a fantastic goalkeeper. Don't get me wrong. It's not about him not being good. Um, but I think yeah. Dean Henderson offers so much more. Um, which again, and I, and I go back, <laughs> go back to my analogy of getting out of the swimming pool still being wet. If you'd have asked me this just after mm. retirement, I'd have been like English goalkeeper. How can, how dare there be one better than I was? But now I look at it, <laughs> nice and dry, sat there in Coley's cold room, and uh, <laughs> and look at it like clearly and say, yeah, this, yeah. this lad has all the ingredients. Like you mentioned, Joe Hart, it's a great analogy. Yeah. Joe has had all the ingredients to that age to be. England's best, best goalkeeper. So you've both gone for Dean Henderson to start at the Euros. Love it. We're going to move on to what really happened. This is part of the show where the listeners uh, vote for what they want to know what really happened in your career, Jamo. And we're going to go back to 2005, Man City versus Borough. It's one all. You're trying to fight for a UEFA Cup spot. Stewie Pearce takes you off and puts you up top. What, what, what really happened? Why? Well, there, there's, Man, me, Coley, Coley, there's me talking about goals that I could have saved or whatever. This is probably the worst one of all of them. So we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, let, me, let me give you the, the picture, the story. So as you say, we're playing Middlesbrough, last game of the season, uh, level on points. They're ahead of us on goal difference. They're in the, I'm going to say the UEFA, UEFA position. Yeah. Half time, Chappie, the kit man, he's the most famous kit man Manchester City have ever had. <laughs> Yeah. One of the most famous kit men in, in Premier League history. So Chappie goes, Damon, I've got your, your shirt printed off. And I'm like, what? What were you on about? He goes, your shirt, because, you, you know, you might be going up front. And I'm like... <laughs> you didn't know. Fuck off. Yeah, I was like, fuck off, Chappie. Don't, yeah, just leave it. Go go out second half. <laughs> and then it, it seemed like, I don't know, 15 minutes to go. And uh, all of a sudden the board goes up. Nicky Weaver stood next to... Uh, I can't remember who put the water up. But Nicky Reeve was there. I think it was Faz. <laughs> Nick, am I coming off? And then I sort so of you talk, didn't know. Uh, you didn't know at all. You didn't know no, this. Is what? No. Jesus. Talk about, talk about prep. We'll get on to the prep bit. So uh, I jog over, and then Nick, my shirt comes out. Uh, Claudio Arena goes off, and I go on up. Well, I, I say I go up front. I went on pitch. 
And uh, I think <laughs> Gareth Southgate and Mark Schwartz are probably the only. I think I actually caught Gareth. I think there was Mark Schwartz was probably the only Middlesbrough player that I didn't kick. Different type of football choice. To watch. <laughs> if, if VAR was involved, I would have been off after thirty seconds. All right, because I literally fouled every player on the field. Uh, I might have been taking one or two of my own teammates out. Um, one every oh, header, oh, oh, oh. which is crucial. You know, Nicky yeah, yeah. was putting them, teeing me up, and I was flicking them on and winning every header. Um, and I, I, I claimed the penalty, which Robbie Fowler yeah. duly missed. And uh, what happened? I don't know. I don't really know what happened. Apparently, Stuart Pearce thought that I should be playing like the number nine target man role. Um, he claims that I was playing the number ten role. I just claimed that I was out on the field and didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> hurt it, hurt it him put people. You in a ten as well. <laughs> God. Yeah, but well, you must have, you must have been like really good in training when you came out on pitch. If you came, I mean, what's the no, thinking James, behind this, it? This is the preparation thing that Coley was talking about. So. Uh, <sighs> Who knows what would have happened? But had Stuart Pearce said to me on the on the Friday or Saturday, I think last game of the season or on Sunday, last training session, Jamo, I've got, I've got, come in, come in. I've got Genius a really idea. mad idea, but I think it could work. You go up front. <laughs> Ten minutes if we draw. And what do you reckon? I'd be like, cheers, Gaffer. Uh, we da, 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 I'd have got like for half, half a dozen lads out, and I'd been taking touches, spinning, shooting from thirty five yeah. yards, header in, everything. Yeah. I would have just, I would have relieved really, for, for an hour. I would have gone, you know, that five minutes would be enough. But yeah. instead, it's like, Jamer, on you go. Well, okay. Yeah. On oh, my ball. On oh, my ball. Crap. <laughs> 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 Joe, could you, imagine, could you imagine Mourinho pulling off Petter Check and going, go on, Joe, get, get in Mate. between the sticks? Oh, God. Like, it's, it's, it's insane. Like that. I've, we've talked about it before and. I've not talked to Piercy about it. Like, I'd be interested to see like, what he thought about it. But I remember what I remember coming off, watching a match of the day and thinking, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's fucking, like, it's mental. Like, and that's what, it wasn't Macken. I remember they John, they John, Macken, Macken, John Macken on the bench. On the bench. A striker. <laughs> this is the guy that scored in the Manchester derby. Yeah. Probably got over 100 goals in his career. But, you know, Colby, I mean, this is a a funny thing about it. If he'd have said, look, there's a chance you might go up, what I need you to do is we'll put the ball in and you just dominate in the air. Because believe me, there was no no Aston Villa player who was going to beat me in the air. Of course not. Now, then all of a sudden, it's like, I'll stand here and I'll shout out to, I don't know, Sean Wright, Phillips, whoever, get on the angle, put it in there, and I'll just head it back into the middle. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was like, (laughs) go out there and... You know, my analogy Play. of be, be, coming out of the swimming pool being wet, well, I was like a fish out of water. It was just like, what, what's going on? Just, just slapping people around the face. <laughs> Bad. Right, I don't want this to end, but we have to. We've got to move on to I predictions. Two in one tackle. <laughs> Double clothesline. No, no, on the floor. It was just like a... Anyway. Right, prediction time, guys. Um, massive games this weekend. Uh, Coley, you're not doing massively well with these predictions are you I've, I've hit a brick wall mate I've hit yeah. a brick wall that's for sure right so we're going to go for first Liverpool Aston Villa J-Mo who's going to win Liverpool versus Aston Villa I think there's a big big decision to be made and that is what lineup does Jurgen Klopp go in defence Aston Villa is Jack Grealish fit I'm not sure no Dean Smith said after the game he's not sure when he's coming back oh god I'm going really? gonna, to I'm gonna say no he's not fit Oh, well, if, if Tuff says, if so Tuff says he's not fit, then he's not fit. Um, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. Liverpool, <laughs> I don't think Liverpool can play as bad it's as they did. Me off. Tuff's you off. off as well, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, was, me sorry off. that was a Capelloism. I've, I've been working hard. I'm in five k <laughs> this morning. <laughs> okay, I'll go, I'll go for the draw. Draw. Well, because I'm going to have to go for the draw because Liverpool need to do something they haven't done. That score two goals at home. Maybe that could be the first time they do it. Mm. Um, I, I'm going to go for the draw because I just think that that where I thought Liverpool had turned the corner yesterday morning. Yeah. Um, mm. They've got the the second game against Real Madrid is massive. I, I yeah draw. Coley, I'm going to go with Liverpool. I think they have to win. Uh, to stay in contention just think they just have enough quality still I do whoever they play it might even give them a livener after that terrible performance over in Madrid 
Yeah, it weren't the greatest, was it? No. Uh, right, next one. West Ham versus Leicester. West Ham. Yeah, well, quite, quite confusing. Champions League. West, can you imagine this, Coley? Oh. West Ham, Real Madrid, Champions League, knockouts. Oh, now you're talking. That would be. <laughs> I just love to just like. Yeah, I'm going to go with West Ham again, and and if West Ham. My pals are West Ham fans. If they ever got on a Champions League, just Champions League tour, it would be carnage. Can you imagine that? Oh, <laughs> they'd love it. They'd absolutely love it. Be <laughs> great. It'd be a great spectacle. I love when you get a new team in the Champions League, like a new t- like them fans are so excited. Like West Ham, uh, Chelsea fans, Man United fans, Liverpool fans can get a bit blase. They expect it. it. They, they, they expect they, it. Yeah. West Ham fans would would genuinely just it would be mean so much. So I'm going to go with West Ham. West Ham beat Leicester. Yeah. I want to go. I want to go Leicester because I want Chelsea to finish in top four for that Champions League. But it's not about okay. me making the predictions. It's about you guys. The next one, Spurs. Yeah, Spurs. <laughs> yeah Tubbs. <laughs> Tubbs <laughs> me <laughs> off. <laughs> Spurs. Man United. Jamo. Uh, Spurs. Man United. Oh, depends who's in goal for uh, either team. Spurs. Man United. Mm. Well, they can't play as bad as they do either. Man United, how frustrating are Man United this season? Can't yeah, we? can't predict them. Can't, oh, don't do know, know I, I, don't know. Forget any kind of previous rivalry. You want to see the best players and the best teams play the best football? Yeah. And you look at that Man United side, and, and DJ, right, so my son DJ, yeah. he goes, uh, um, what's his name? Tom, 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 McTominay. He goes, yeah, yeah. Good, good player him. And I'm like, yeah. Really? Yeah, <laughs> what, what a good player he is! <laughs> it's, kind of, it's horrible when your son thinks he knows more about football than you do. Um, but they, my you, son's eight and he does <laughs> know more than, than me. Knows more about goalkeeping than you do. Yeah, it's, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> Although we did pick the same goalkeeper, that's yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, no, both, sat on, both sat on Dean Henderson for the I'm happy uh, Euros. With that, yeah. Well, if yeah. I ask my son what he thinks, then we can use him as like the casting vote. But the, yeah. um, <laughs> you look at Man United side and you just think, you know, every position they have quality. Mm. But yet they always let you down somehow. So um, I'll go for Tom. Colin. I'll go draw. I'm going to go draw. Just I, I, I probably would edge to Tottenham, but just because we've gone so similar with a prediction, I'm going to go draw. We, actually, you got right because Mourinho is going to say stop Fernandez from getting the ball. Yeah, and then Man United all of a sudden it's almost like a cog in the yeah. uh, a, a spanner in the works in the weeks in the crocs Huey Huey Berg will have to lock on to Fernandez that's what he'll do Huey Berg Huey Berg Huey Berg oh my god this has been absolutely fantastic uh, J-Mo thank you so much mate yes brilliant J-Mo was there only two games this weekend then no that was three three we do only do three yeah okay and uh, we do a table at the end of it and um, I think I'm still in the lead against the guests right Boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are, you are in the lead, but uh, yeah, Jamie, just, thank, just. <laughs> thank you very much, mate. Absolutely. Thanks, Tubbs. <laughs> Tubbs, that, Tubbs. I've, been, Thanks, I've Tubbs. been Tubbs. That's been Joe Cole. That's been <laughs> David James. <laughs> Tubbs, me right on. Tubbs, uh, they know this is silent E. <laughs> Tubbsy, <laughs> <laughs> top man, Joe. How good was that? What a legend. I love he, him. He's brilliant, isn't he? He's, he's such good value. He's so, listen, he was different as a, a player. His mind is under by a brilliant artist. I've got to find that picture where he drew got, with me and Robbie Fowler. I've got to got find it, it yeah. It um, but um, just a great, great fella. Great. And and also, you know, like you said, the injuries he had to play on as long as he is, like, he's was staggering his strong mentality like he's, like I said, he's head of his time doing the, the, the sports science sports psychology from a young young age uh, he was a, yeah brilliant, oh, brilliant. Mate, I absolutely loved it absolutely loved it I loved Pulis last week and today though was uh, unbelievable and another thanks. top performance from you oh I really enjoyed it thanks for having me mate I've absolutely loved it see you later Layers. you've been watching All To Play For brought to you by Joe and Coral <laughs>